Taylor Sheridan is one of the most promising up-and-coming filmmakers working in Hollywood. He's only written three movies, Sicario, Hell or High Water, and Wind River, the third being his directorial debut. These three films fit into the genre of the neo-western. The best way to define a neo-western is to take the rules that apply to a more traditional western but with one key distinction. Neo-westerns take place in the contemporary world, but in a subsect that doesn't follow the same rules as everywhere else. These films have been on the rise ever since Joel and Ethan Coen's No Country for Old Men was released, and I think the genre is important to look at for a number of reasons. For one thing, it sheds light on a region that doesn't get enough discussion. The problems that the characters face are problems that are faced by millions of people within the real world. It was a very personal exploration of a way of life, you know, and, uh, and it lent itself to some pretty harsh study of you know, us as a people, our relationships to people of different genders and race and everything. Today, I want to go in depth at the defining traits of the neo-Western, and more specifically, how they compare with a traditional Western. One of the biggest themes found within the subgenre is the lack of rules. Sheridan's films often take place in desolate locations, far from any metropolitan area, and out of bounds with a lot of the laws that everyone else follows. We're outside the rule of law. We're, we're in a place where the law of nature dominates the landscape. This lack of rules leads to moral ambiguity. Characters make their own rules. This in and of itself isn't always a bad thing. In Wind River, Corey works for the Fish and Wildlife Department. Even though he is out of his jurisdiction, he makes it his mission to help hunt down the men responsible for Natalie's death. Hunt predators. Good, so why don't you come hunt one for me then? This means breaking rules when necessary to find out who he is even hunting. When he finally does find the man, he tortures and kills him, yet it feels justified. It plays off of our natural instincts of right and wrong. He gives him the same chance that he gave Natalie. I want you to run. However, that isn't always the case. In Sicario, Matt's treatment of innocent civilians is a central conflict of the film. It's up to Kate and subsequently the audience to choose whether or not to support cruel treatment for what he views as the greater good. Much like what we saw in traditional westerns, characters do what they think is best, they set their own rules in life. In Hell or High Water, following the final bank robbery, Toby and Tanner come face to face with a local militia, characters doing what they think is right after law enforcement failed to provide adequate protection. Another major theme of the neo-western is characters searching for justice. The protagonists of all of Sheridan's work have all been wronged in one way or another. They're trying to make amends for that wrong. In the case of Wind River, Corey is trying to find the men responsible for Natalie's murder, in part because of the way he lost his daughter and the hope for some closure. How does a man move on from a tragedy without ever getting closure? How does he accept that he will not know? And how can he rectify that? And how can he make peace with that? In Hell or High Water, Toby and Tanner's mother was manipulated and kept in poverty by the Texas Midland Bank. Their spree of robberies are the best way that they can think to get back at the bank. And in Sicario, Alejandro's family was brutally murdered by the drug cartel. Seemingly everything he does is to try and get back at Fusta, the man responsible for it. By the time he is able to confront Fusta, he strips away everything that means anything from him, murdering his wife and children. In doing so, Alejandro brings himself down to the level of Fusta, turning himself into yet another cold-blooded killer. However, these characters haven't just been wronged by individuals or the bank. Society itself has turned its back towards all of these people. I get so mad. I want to fight the whole world left them alone in the middle of nowhere. By the time the characters decide to do something about it, they are also proving their own self-worth. The biggest thematic connection with other westerns is characters feeling remorse. This idea has been explored most notably in a lot of later westerns. The definitive example of this is Unforgiven, a film that tried to and succeeded in deconstructing a lot of the tropes associated with the western genre. It no longer paints the cold-hearted killer as the unequivocal good guy. I never felt comfortable writing about a character who killed a bunch of people and then went off and had breakfast and charmed some lady. It, it was so far from what my impression of life was that I couldn't write that. Instead, it paints the Western genre in a much more realistic light, looking at the real consequences that come from actions. 
The same can be said about the neo-western. Central to every film that I've seen in the genre are consequences to actions. In my video dedicated to Sicario, I spoke about all the hardships that befalls upon Kate. How over the course of the film she sees and experiences some of the worst hardships imaginable. Everything from being shot at to nearly being killed and used as bait. This has a real impact on her emotionally. In many ways, she becomes a shell of what she used to be until in the final scene, she has everything stripped away from her. The rugged west is a dangerous place, and even though we are 150 years past this, human nature doesn't change that quickly, and the same cultural problems that existed in the western are still found within the neo-western. The neo-western subgenre has resulted in some of the greatest projects over the past decade, Everything from Sheridan's work to television series like True Detective and, to a lesser extent, some aspects of Fargo. I feel like this subgenre has nothing but potential to expand further in the future, and I think it's exciting to see young filmmakers looking to the past to create great works in the present. 21st century, I'm racing a fire of the river with a herd of cattle. And I wonder why my kids won't do this shit for a living. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and for all of your support over the past year. This time last year, we were at a little less than 9,000 subscribers and now over 57,000. This growth is really insane and I wanted to end this year by just saying thank you to everyone, welcoming everybody new and thanking everyone else for sticking around. I think 2018 is going to be our best year yet. I'm already starting to form a schedule and I'm really excited about what movies are going to be covered. But until then, make sure you hit that subscribe button in case you missed it, I put a link to my last video on Die Hard and what it can teach us about storytelling. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next week and next year.